Hi, Tara here from Super Hair Pieces, and today we are talking to Riley about hair systems and trans people. So welcome, Riley, and thank you for being here today. Tell us a little bit about you. Um, so I am 31, going to be 32 by the middle of December. Um, I've been on testosterone because I know that this is what the podcast is like mainly about what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. um, I've been on testosterone for it was actually 10 years on Sunday, which is bizarre. Um, but, you know, just a Florida born and raised. So I live in South Florida, been here my entire life. Uh, you know, don't have any means of leaving Florida, probably going to move North Florida with my fiance eventually, but we are here in South Florida. Um, you know, working as much as I can, you know, and then w when it came to like hair systems, which is definitely the biggest thing for me, um, it has sincerely, well, not sincerely, it's has ser seriously, excuse me, uh, like improved my confidence in myself because, you know, there are a, a lot of other trans individuals or trans guys that, you know, unfortunately do lose their hair and they have no way of, you know, trying to fix it or they just, shave it bald and that's it that's the look they're going for at least for me it's like oh i'm still decently young i kind of wanted my hair so that's where i'm at right now yeah did you have signs of hair loss when you started transitioning when i just started uh mm -hmm. like pre-t and then tr going into my transition um i did have hair i had you know I, my hairline didn't recede or anything like that i've always had uh thin hair but it was never what it is now um i think i started noticing my hair loss when i was like maybe 23, 24 is when it started going the way that it was going. And I, I take my dad's hairline because his is receding as well, or has been receding. But I think it was, you know, just being on a new hormone and then trying to figure out like a dosage wise, because dosage when it comes to that can vary certain uh, effects on your body. And I was on one of the, like the highest doses that they offered. And I think that's when I really started to see my hair lose itself. So with me, it's definitely something like if you're, if you're young or you're just starting tea, like I want to give you like the best tips possible. Like, so, you know, maybe if you do see, eventually see your hair losing, then you can take action to get it. Or if you're at the stage where I am at and you're like, well, I need something to know, you know, help me out. Then you could definitely look into doing a hair system such as myself. So you mentioned that you started when you were around 23. How long did it take you from the time that you started noticing the hair loss to the point where it was very significant? Um, I think, well, when I turned 23, that's when I started to see it. I think it maybe take, took like six months to okay. a year to, to really start to see because I was just like, I have no idea what to do. I was on... Um, what's it called finish dry I think that's what it's called it's kind of like it's the hormone that right like biological males are on to help stop the process or like slow down the process of hair loss that didn't do anything for me I was on it for the recommended time and it didn't do anything so I was just like whatever I'm just gonna leave it alone and just deal with the hair loss so so how did you feel about that I mean you were losing your hair but also at the same time you're getting something you wanted how was that for you I think to be honest it was it was hard. It was a hard transition because, you know, yeah, I've ultimately wanted to be who I was meant to be and who I was meant to be born with, born as, but seeing the effects of, you know, losing your hair and, and dealing with that, like you already have so much confidence and going in, you're doing something brand new, like this is what you want to do. And then it's like, oh, well, now you're just going to get kicked in the butt and, you know, lose your hair essentially. So it was kind of like, confidence was good at the start of it and be like I'm super happy with who I'm becoming and all that stuff but then now it's like oh now you're losing your hair so all that confidence that you just built up kind of just went on the sidelines so that's kind of where I was in the very beginning so it took you some time to get a system so how was that moment when you decided to finally get one I honestly I feel like it it took um, I want to say it was, it was probably like two years ago, to be completely honest, when I first like discovered hair systems, because I looked at other things. I looked at, obviously, a lot of guys now are doing um, hair transplants and all that stuff. They're like going to across the country to do that kind of stuff. Good for them. But I think it was when I started seeing it up until I 
really knew what a hair system was. I was just kind of like at the point where like, you know what, it's life. You kind of got to deal with it. I had people in my, like my dad, he was just like, well, you know, you have that head shape to go bald. Why don't you just go bald? That's not the look I'm going for. I'm a skinny, slim guy and uh, a bald look wouldn't necessarily be the look I'm going for. So two years ago, looked into hair systems, looked into like the Bosley and hair, like the hair club or something like that. So I kind of see what they do. Um, and then when I found, you know, super hair pieces, I was just like, it's what you're ultimately wanting. It's real hair and it's making you feel more confident in yourself. Obviously there's some, you know, not, uh, every, like when you're putting on a hair system, like me at the very beginning, I did not want to shave my head. I'm just like, I don't want to go bald yet. I just want to deal with it. So when I did talk to you about it, Tara, yeah. I was just more like, let me, let me just try it out. Let me see what systems I can do. Like, let me try with maybe like daily tape that wouldn't really necessarily hurt my hair. Just kind of see what it's like. And then I think maybe like six months ago, that's when I was like, you know what? Just shave your head. Just do it. You can keep the sides in the back of your head as long as you want. And then just go for it. Honestly, that's what I've been doing. I've, I've watched a lot of videos about it. I've watched Rick do it and they follow tips and tricks that he does. And I'm like, where I'm at now with it is far better than what I could have expected. You mentioned that your dad has some hair loss. Is it only your dad or does it run in the family? Is there any women in the family that have issues with hair loss? So honestly, it's just my dad. Um, cause I have a younger sister obviously she's fine. And then I have an older brother. My older brother is 37. So we are different in age. We're like six years apart, but he's fine. He's got full head of hair. He likes to keep it buzzed, but he doesn't have that hairline that my dad has. I think it was the case that it's like, he might eventually get to that point, but I think it was the effects of testosterone and being on such a high dose. It's just like, Oh, we're going to kick your, you know, your sort of side effects into overdrive so i think that it kind of took over his genes and that's what it is when someone is starting tea you're just like well look in your family see what sort of genetics they have if you know if you have a father or an uncle whatever and they have a full head of hair your chances of hair loss are very very slim it can happen but it's very slim so with me i think my dad started losing his hair when he was probably around the same age to like 22 23 is when he started losing his hair so then having that genetics that's just when i started losing mine as well from what i understand when the individual is female and they are prone to baldness and they start with testosterone the genetics start changing to male pattern baldness um and for everyone would be different how was it for you yeah yeah usually like when so i'm on like facebook groups and everything like that it's all trans support it's trans guys and trans females usually most of the the main topics are on there is, oh, you know, well, I'm starting T, what are some side effects that, you know, maybe you've experienced? Me personally, I've gone on that Facebook chat and it was just like, hey, this is what I've experienced being 10 years on this hormone and you're just starting. Like if I would have known 10 years ago that like, hey, Riley, you're, you're going to lose your hair, or you're going to have a hair loss, whatever. Maybe I would be like, let me, let me do more research about it and let me talk to the doctor about it. Because mind you, 10 years ago, versus now being trans wasn't as big as it is as it is today like you go to pride parades and all that stuff and trans is you know everybody knows about trans everybody knows about you know famous trans uh individuals that they know who they are with me it's like the only person that i knew of back in the day was Chaz bono that was it and i'm like from if i would have known now you know what the kids know now i probably would have had a different aspect i probably wouldn't have I would have continued my transition. I would have just like, you know what, this is what you want. But I would have talked to the doctor and be like, hey, well, you know, my dad has uh, hair loss. You know, he's got a receding hairline. Can I start on a lower dose? And maybe I won't, it, maybe it wouldn't affect me as much. But, you know, you live and you learn. You can't really do anything about it. I'm not reversing. I'm not transitioning or anything like that. I love my life. I love what I do. So I just think with that, it just look, look into it. Look into your genetics. And if there's something that you want to do and you don't mind having your hair loss, then then fine. If you, you know, worry about it, that's when you can take that next step, next step and look into a hair system. So you still have your hair. It's just somebody else's hair. 
you know, it's just a different way. You can go as long as you want. Like I've grew my hair from the very beginning of having my consultation for a, a year, almost two years ago, I grew out my hair. Like, and the hair piece that I have right now is a full lace system and it's long and I like it and it gives me the look that I want. So it's kind of cool that you can change it up. You're not like, oh, well, if I get a haircut, kind of can't grow the hair back. Well, no, you can get as long as you want. So I think that's pretty cool. So you mentioned that it could be good for people to go and get transplants. Uh, you yourself tried finasteride. Have you tried any natural remedies or anything else? Yeah, the, the other thing. So you can take uh, minoxidil. Minoxidil is like Rogaine. Rogaine, it's basically the same thing. You can do that if you have like, if you do it early. If you're on Rogaine or on minoxidil and you're like, oh, I'm just starting to experience some hair loss, you can go on that and finish dry because finish dry basically will like it'll stop the process of your hair losing but then minoxida will grow back sort of like the hair follicles but it's not like 100 percent guaranteed it depends on you know your genetics and if you can grow that back unfortunately in my case it didn't work i tried it um on the top of my head it didn't do anything it works for my beard and my mustache but it doesn't work for the top of my head so so why not consider a transplant i think it's it's overall like I have juggled back and forth with it. I did talk to my fiance about it as well. I think if it's if it's more feasible, it's not an inexpensive thing to do. Um, not a lot of people, like it's more of an out of country thing. A lot of guys that I follow on Instagram or anything like that, they're going to Turkey to do it. But the most people kind of see that misconception of like, oh, well, I'm gonna get a hair transplant. I'm gonna pay all this money and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna be good to go. That's not the case. It's more of like you're paying upware of, you know, 12,000 US dollars and above, but then you have to go back like, you know, six months to a year to see what the progress is like. And if the doctor is like, no, like you need a little bit more treatment, that's another $12,000 out of your pocket. And in the United States, we go with health insurance. Health insurance doesn't cover anything cosmetic. If you, if it's a medical need, Absolutely. But having a cosmetic thing, it's not your insurance isn't going to cover it. So for me, if it was a case where I'm like, I can afford to do this, then yeah, absolutely. But for me, it's not a feasible thing. And it's not a feasible, a feasible thing for a lot of other, you know, trans individuals, because at the end of the day, their biggest thing is, do they want to do where they can get a hair transplant? Or do they want to medically, uh, they, they want to, um, how do I word it? Do they want a surgery that ultimately makes them feel better about themselves? Like for me personally, if someone's like, Riley, you can either have top surgery or you can have a hair transplant. What would you do? I chose top surgery. I got top surgery in the beginning of this year and I feel hundred percent better about myself that I went that route rather than the hair route. You know what I mean? So how does it feel to have hair again? I honestly, I like, I feel so much confidence in myself. Um, I'm in, I'm in like, my industry is real estate. So I work with like apartment complexes and all that stuff. So going into it, when people are coming in and they're like, oh, you're so young. And I'm like, yeah, I'm 31. They're like, you're 31. I thought you were like 24. You have like a full head of hair. It makes me have that sense of confidence in myself because granted, like your image when it comes to real estate or anything like that is the biggest thing. And prior to finding the hair systems, I'm just like, I don't feel confident about myself. Like I'm so young. Why is my hair receding? But now like I wake up, I get to do my hair. I get to shampoo my hair. Granted, it's not my physical hair, but it is hair. And I get to style it the way that I want. It looks good. I always get compliments about it. So I think this was the right move for myself personally. And it's just boosted my confidence. Like no tomorrow, like no tomorrow. So have you had to deal with any issues regarding hair systems? Um, n not personally i think it's just more of like the maintenance aspect of it because i think obviously i'm 100 percent good with it i maintain it as much as i can mine i can have mine last up to like a month but i think there in the maybe in the very beginning of starting the hair systems i was just kind of like i don't want to mess this up or like i put it on wrong or you know i'm not you know, maintaining it the proper way where I watch all the other YouTube videos about it. And they're like, well, theirs looks fantastic. Why doesn't mine look like that? I think in the very beginning, I'm like, 
that's kind of what you need to to understand of what people need to understand is they're different different systems but i think in the very beginning that's kind of where i was like well is this the right thing to do and i did contemplate i'm like do i want to continue doing this but now looking back i'm like no this is ultimately what i want to do i don't mind doing the maintenance i don't mind having to keep up with it it makes me feel better about myself regardless of the maintenance and all that stuff so so you probably can say that there's been a learning curve yeah, a hundred percent. I think it is a biggest, a big learning curve, but if you're watching, like if you watch YouTube videos or you watch people or you ask for tips or anything like that, or you watch, uh, like the TikToks and Instagram tips and tricks, it's going to help you further, you know, make your hair system last longer and hopefully give you a better aspect of what a hair system is and how to maintain it and how to get like the longevity of, uh, of the system itself. So you started with a lace system. I, yeah, I still have my lace. I still have it. So why not try something different? Like why have you decided to stick with lace? I think it's living in Florida. Florida is a very, very hot and humid state. Um, that a lot, not a lot of people understand because our humidity is different than like California's humidity and, and Arizona's humidity. It's here. It's I'm constantly moving and I'm constantly walking a property in the heat. I think lace for me is more breathable. It's easier for me. Um, I can definitely feel like when my hair is blowing, I can feel it kind of breathing through my actual scalp. And that feels good because it's like, okay, well, my hair is or my scalp is breathing and all that stuff. So I, that's probably why I've stuck with lace itself. So, so last question. Would you recommend trans people or anyone dealing with hair baldness to get a hair system? And if so, why? I would 100% recommend it because if I'm at the age that I'm at right now, and let's say you're younger than I am and you're looking into a hair system and you want to have that confidence back, I say, go for it. Give it a try. If you're, if you're not as like open about it how I was in the very beginning, you're like, well, I don't really want to shave the top of my head i i like it okay there are alternatives to doing that you can put on a daily tape and just test it out you don't have to glue it or anything like that it's it's best to glue like the front hairline yeah but like if you don't want to shave the whole top of your head do some tape try it out if you're like well i feel fantastic about myself then you know that you should go about it and i think it's not only good for other trans folks that are dealing with the same you know side effects that I am that I was it's good for either like biological males that are going through male pattern baldness um it, it gives you a sense of confidence because what happens if it's a case where like the biggest thing is dating life right whether you're you know a gay man or or a straight man or anything like that your hair some other people your partner in life may not care but it's the confidence in yourself if you're dating somebody or you're going out in the world and you're dating and you don't and you're like i don't have hair and that's the biggest thing for yourself look into a hair system you know it does make you feel a lot better about yourself and that's ultimately how i felt granted i've been with my fiance for eight years she didn't care she's like if this is what you want to do this is what you want to do but starting to wear a hair system from where I was previously. She's like, I've seen your confidence boost so, so much in the last two years of you doing this. Why didn't you start it before? You know what I mean? So I feel like if it's, if you're on the bridge of doing it, I think just do it, take, take that leap of faith, just try it out. If it's not for you, then it's not for you. But if you're like, Hey, I'm going to take this word of advice from Riley and try to do it. And you feel better about yourself. I'll take all the, all that credit. I'll take the brownie points for you feeling confidence in yourself. But I think I would say for everybody that wants to do it, just do it, bite the bullet, do it. You're going to feel better about yourself, to be honest. Okay. That's great. Thanks for everything today. It was great talking to you, Riley. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing and we'll talk soon.